Hi everybody, it's Claire here from My Creative Spirit and in today's video I'm going to show you how to assemble uh, this and that box, a three-dimensional deep box with uh, signature black construction tape. So there's no painting, no gluing, um, if like me you get in a mess with glue then this may be the way forward for you to assemble fabulous three-dimensional projects. And then the box has a really lovely slidey drawer inside that lifts out to reveal a deep compartment underneath. So let's get started. There are two sets of pieces in the kit. These uh, little pieces come in a bag and they make up the sliding box. So we're going to use those first as a practice and then all of the larger pieces make up the bigger, deeper box. So we called this the this and that box and it was named by my sister for putting this and that in. Um, so first of all we need to do some prep and we're going to take our signature black construction tape. Fabulous tape, you can rip it uh, fold it, paint it, you can emboss it if you want to, um, you can do whatever you like with it. It sticks to itself, it gives a really lovely professional finish to your projects and it hides all that chipboard edge which quite often uh, might have tabs in so if you've got a tabbed product you're putting together you can edge the outer edges with our tape just to give that really lovely professional look. So we're going to go round and edge all of the side pieces first and the reason we're doing that is we're going to edge inside and out as we put the pieces together and that way you're ready to decorate your project straight away. You don't have to um, paint any edges inside if you're going to decorate it with paper and if you're painting this will take paint um, you could even create your own papers painted papers to go on the outside or use decorative ones so I come at this from a paper crafters angle rather than a um, inky painter <laughs> if you know what I mean so you can either cut or rip your little strips to decorate these short edges of these side pieces. And I'm using a pair of titanium scissors. These are the Tim Holtz scissors. Um, they've got a serrated edge, but the titanium doesn't stick to the tape quite as much as stainless steel scissors do. It's a minor difference. Any scissors will cut the tape. Um, but the sticky, it's a high resin, acid free, that's key, our tape is acid free, um, high resin glue and it does start to stick on your scissors, so the titanium ones you get less sticky on your scissors. Let's just do these ones. So as you can see I'm ripping it, not all of the tapes on the market rip but a tape that you can rip means you can assemble quicker. You're not having to pick up your scissors every time. I tend to leave the black bits on my scissors until I get to the end of the little process that I'm doing. But you can take them off as you go. Right, one more piece. So this is the practice box really. If you're new to construction, uh, it's always good to assemble something small first, see how you get on. The lovely thing about this is if it all goes wrong, you can take it off and start it again. And our tape comes in two lengths, 50 meters and five meters. And so if you like construction, the 50 meter roll really goes a long way. If you're just starting out, five metres is a great tester, but it may not um, complete a whole box. So now those are prepped, let's start on this base. 
So we're going to take a piece of tape, put it half on, half off, down one side, and using your scissors, just trim it off. And again, so I'm overlapping the corners, half on, half off, so I've got a right angled corner. And snip. Excuse my hands. If you rip it just slightly, it doesn't matter. The corners actually get cut off. Just come in this way and snip it. So you've got a nice black edge around your box. All sticky side facing down. Now we're going to flip over and take our scissors and cut across the corners. So you're not leaving a gap like you would if you were wrapping an album cover. You're cutting just slightly away, but almost. And that slightly away, it's a millimetre, um, just means that you've got uh, something right at that very corner that's just going to curl up. And then with all of my box designs, I always design the longer sides to sit over the shorter sides so when you look at the project from the front you haven't got edges showing so you take your short sides and you stand them up on the tape down on the work surface lining up the top and bottom edge just bring them in slightly so they're at a slight angle I'll lift that up and you can see so I haven't put it on as a right angle I've just tilted it in slightly and that just gives you a slightly bigger gap when you push it down and press down so that when you cover that gap with a piece of tape and we're going to cover it completely try not to get it stuck to the tape coming along the other way and press down when you lift it up it stands up nice and straight, it's not resisting. And then do the same on the other side. So line it up, line up the top and bottom edge, tilt it in just slightly and then let it fall out and cover the gap. Not mind the gap, cover the gap. And cut off. And then lift up. And by lifting up, those two tape stick together. And that's the beauty about our tape. It will stick to itself. And then you get a really nice joint on your piece. And then we're going to put the long sides on. So bring the short side up and line it up. If you bring one short side up and line up your corner, the other end will automatically meet. Like that. So when you're happy with where that's sitting, and you can feel between your fingers that the edges are lined up, just let that piece flop out and cover that gap. And you can see we're building up the inside edge as well as the outside edge. Um, and it's all nicely covered and ready to stick your paper on. So with all of my kits, they're all laser cut. Some are grey board, uh, 2.25 micron, so slightly thicker than you would um, cut yourself if you were using um, just sheets of chipboard. And there is a paper allowance built in where lids are involved so that you've always got room to stick your paper on the inside and the outside of the lid. So I've lined that one up I think. No, it's not lined up, it's seriously out. So I'm just going to lift it off and line it up again. And you want to make sure that you're sticking it down right next to the base and then just tilt it inwards slightly before you lay it flat and you get a natural gap 
and cover that gap. And trim off. Now the tape is thin enough for it to sit nicely under any paper that you put over the top and it won't leave a ridge at all. It doesn't add any dimension to the piece that you're assembling really. It is micro thin and it's light resistant so it won't rot like um, the cheaper masking tapes, the cream tapes that you can get, the painter's tapes, all of that. Um, and we need that if we're making an heirloom. You don't want it to rot over time and fall apart after you've spent all of those hours putting it together. So now we need to join the sides. So we've got a nice little box all ready to be assembled. So the first thing to do is just to go around and make sure that all of your outside tapes are stuck down nice and neatly. And then if you want to at the corners, you can put little holding strips of tape and remember with my kits the long sides sit over the short side so if you want to add a little holding strip put a little piece of tape horizontally across the edge of the long side and bring it down over the corner onto the short side Oops, nice and tightly and then we do the other end. Making sure that the top edges are all lined up nice and straight. So you could make any little box, any size, just in exactly the same way. and you can have it assembled in next to no time. So now we're going to just take the long edges. So there's quite a bit of prep, but as I say, once you've prepped it, you are ready to decorate. There's no waiting time. So I'm just going to cut a piece of tape that is as long as the side. Stick it on the long edge and fold it nice and tightly around that corner. If it sticks out at the bottom, just trim it off. And then go round all of your sides and do exactly the same. I launched this assembly system um, was about five and a half, six years ago. I used to teach workshops and I did start off by using just normal masking tape, which does work, uh, before I realised that it wasn't acid free. And then we would paint, so we'd assemble it, it would all be creamy white and then we'd paint. And we could still be painting at two o'clock in the afternoon with a four, a, a four o'clock finish on a workshop. And everybody had come to make beautiful boxes and we still hadn't stuck any paper on them. So I thought, and, and also lots of ladies have beautiful nails and they didn't like the painting um, because it got on the nails. So I thought we have to come up with a different, a different method. The construction strip method is great, however, it's adding the card thickness to every corner, so you have to make um, bigger allowances if you're going to put lids on things, if you're using construction strips. So I came up with an idea to find something black that would work, and that started my quest for sourcing a black tape. So over a period of three or four months, I bought every roll of black tape that I could find on the market and on album covers and boxes, I assembled them all and then I heat tested them in a 
domestic environment. Um, but I did used to work for um, work at Jaguar Cars and I replicated the temperature testing that the vehicles go through on all of the tapes assembled in different ways and I put them in the freezer and I put them on the radiators and I left them for weeks and slowly over time a lot of them just peeled off or ruckled or did all sorts of things they didn't do what I wanted and out of them all this was the tape that I eventually decided I would put my name to and call construction tape so that's how it all evolved there are other products on the market now called construction tape they don't come with any assembly videos I haven't seen them and uh, they are not the same uh, but you get what you pay for so uh, I was happy to put my name to this one and I've been using it ever since and selling it worldwide so it is only available from our website uh, but if you think it's expensive double up with some friends and get yourself a roll each um, you won't be disappointed I can assure you I've done all the testing for you So what I've done now is gone halfway round, half on, half off, all the way around that bottom edge of my box because sometimes you will have chipboard showing in the corners and actually you don't want that. You want it to be perfectly taped. So what I'm doing is folding out the sides, the long sides, and folding in really sharply these short edges. like that and then before I stick these long side edges down I'm just going to snip the corners off and then do exactly the same now the reason I've snipped the corners off is when you come to stick paper on the bottom of your box you don't want the tape right at the very edge because it will curl up around the paper that you've stuck in place and that doesn't look very nice so if you tape all the way around you get a perfectly finished bottom of your box and then just go around and make sure that all of those side pieces are sitting nice and flat next to the base and that squares up all the angles so do it on the outside and then press down from the inside and then we're going to do the same again around the top edge. So start where you started with your bottom edge, half on, half off, all the way around, pressing the tape down onto the box as you go. Don't worry if it rips, you just rejoin it and carry on. And then you get back to the start. Snip down to the chipboard at the corners. Now I'm going to fold those side pieces out, the longs. I'm not going to trim anything this time. I'm just going to one by one press the tape down onto the top of the chipboard and then press it nice and tightly into the corners on the inside and down onto that inside edge of the board. And I'm just going to go round and do them all one by one. Press down onto your chipboard and then press nice and tightly down into the corners. You can always square up your corners just using the side edge of your scissors, not the blade, but the side edge. Just push down. And that is the quickest way to assemble a little box. I mean that's only the start of our project but if I bring in the little box, here it is. 
undecorated and decorated. So now you're literally ready to cut and stick your papers. And sticking papers onto projects, if you want a nice little black edge, you cut your paper an eighth of an inch narrower in the length and the width. And then you get that really nice black edge showing all the way around. So that's the little slidey box and now we're going to move on to making the big box for this one to fit into. So now we're ready to assemble the larger box base with its lid. So let's sort the pieces. So we've got uh, the larger oblongs, the sides, the support strips, the longer sides, and then these three long strips and the larger of the oblongs, let's just check, is the lid. So we'll assemble the lid first. Let's pop those other pieces to one side. So again, we're going to do it so that we edge the inside and outside at the same time. So these little pieces, you can just go around with your tape, just straight pieces of tape. Like this, if you want to, or you can do it half on, half off vertically and then trim them down. So it's a bit fiddly, but definitely worth it all in the preparation. Flip over. Get rid of your little pesky black bits. Let's do these together. So it is better to go lengthways because you're covering the whole length of the piece. even though we're going to edge top and bottom edges. So I'm going to undo these and I'll show you how easy it is just to peel the tape off. You might not be able to reuse it, but it comes off really easily, but it's high tack and once it's stuck down, it won't lift up by itself. So when you're looking for, um, if you're looking at other brands of tape, you want high tack, acid free for your projects. Definitely not washi tape. That is low tack. Okay, so our little pieces are edged, and then on your lid, we're just going to, on one side, right at the very edge, just put a strip of tape. This is the back edge, and the back edge has a slight overhang over the base. So two pieces of tape like that, and then we're going to do what we've done before, go all the way around, three edges, half on, half off. This doesn't have to be exact half on, half off, because when the box is decorated, you do only see an eighth of an inch of that very edge of the tape. So... <coughs> doesn't have to be perfectly straight. So sticky sides down, half on, half off, all the way around. Oh, excuse the helicopter. It's really nice to be able to hear planes and the helicopters. We're not far from an airport. Uh, here, just a local airport. Just 
wait for him to go over because for a year we've heard nothing in the skies um, so it is nice to hear people getting back to normal so now we're going to take the small side pieces and put them on like we did before sloping them slightly inwards pressing them down onto the tape lining up top and bottom edge and then press outwards and cover and snap off and then lift up and when you lift up make sure that that bottom edge of the side is down next to the base on your work surface it doesn't want to be raised up on the base and then pop the other side on line up top and bottom edge so as before the sides are always covered by the long the short sides are always covered by the long sides or the ends of the short sides and that just gives your project a like, neat finish and trim off and then lift up press down that joins the tape together so you get that double stick that won't come undone and then your long piece so like we did before line it up with one end I'm left-handed so I always line up the right ends and pop it up by the base board down onto the tape and then just tilt it slightly so when you're happy with where it's sitting at the far end I'm not so I'm just going to move it If you're trying to put it on without lifting the end up, this piece obviously is longer than the edge of the box so that you get your perfect corners. So then let it fall out when you're happy with where it's sitting and cover. Don't worry if you get little lines in your tape you can lift it up and as long as it hasn't really stuck to itself you can reposition and flatten that line out or just use another piece of tape and lift up So now we're just going to join these ends, bring them down over themselves, make sure that your tape is lying nice and flat along that top edge and we're going to edge this edge half on half off with tape so I am just going to bring this piece of tape round the corner right up by the top but before I stick it down I'm just going to nick off top and bottom edge just to get those corners angled and then stick it down if you've got any little bits of tape sticking up snip them off So we want a perfectly flat finish. Now, if you feel you want to go around the top edge, like we did for the little box, then you just cut this edge straight. But if you feel that your top edge is perfectly decorated and you don't want to go around, then just snip the corners off this side strip of tape before you stick it down and press down so then like we did before make sure that your sides are sitting perfectly outside at the base on both sides and then we're going to go around this undecorated edge half on half off but we're going to start at the end here I'm not going to stick that end down before I've just 
trimmed that corner off and on the inside. Now I can stick it down on the outside. And then go all the way, oops, <laughs> all the way round. Now that's ripped at a corner, so I'm going to come back slightly. That's quite good that that's happened. It happens sometimes because the tape, if the tape, if your environment is cooler, the tape is stickier or harder to pull off the roll. Not really hard, but if your environment is warmer, the tape comes off the roll easier because the environment does affect the adhesion of the resin. And then snip these corners just back before you really stick them down at the other end, just to stop them sticking out. Then take your scissors and snip down at the angled corners, down to the chipboard, making sure that you haven't got any little black bits on your scissors when you do that. Lay your lid down, open out and fold the tape nice and neatly over the edges onto the inside of your lid. Pressing it down nice and squarely into the corners. So you want a nice flat straight edge on the edge of your box. Like that. So if you feel that you want to go, if you've got any little corners showing and you feel you want to go around this top edge again, it won't add any thickness under the paper that you're going to add, but it does make for a very nice, neat top edge. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start at the back corner. Here. I'll come back and trim it in a minute. Just hold it down and pull. Sometimes that helps to stop the tape from ripping if you hold it as you unroll. So unroll a little bit, hold it and carry on. Snip off. And then I'm just going to straighten that back edge up, snip off that top corner and just peel up the bottom corner Oh, got a, a gale going on and just cut that little edge back get rid of your black bits off your scissors snip down to the chipboard at your corners and then just trim your back edge off Peeling up that corner. So once it's stuck down, it is quite hard to peel it up and snip it off, but you need to do that. And then I like to do the sides first. I always do the short sides first and get them stuck down nicely. If you feel that your corner is sticking out a little too far over the tape that you're going to stick down along the long edge just snip it back just a little bit and then snip back the corners of the long edge as well fold that one up. and then fold your long edge up and over And that is your lid, all decorated and ready to go on the box with really nice sharp corners. So pop that to one side Whoops. and bring in the bottom of the box. So the bottom of the box has got runners that go in to hold the little slidey box. 
and these need to get stuck together first. So just using a little bit of glue, I'm going to stick them together in pairs. Like that. And then I'm going to grab a pencil, excuse my arm, and bring these long side pieces in. Now the little box sits on those and slides along. So I'm going to draw a line on the side piece with the top of the box down a quarter of an inch. So the top of the little box down a quarter of an inch from the top of the side. And I'm going to draw a line. And that line is the line I'm going to stick these runners along. So I'm just going to do that on both of these. And then I'm going to put a T there because that's the top. And then do it again on this one. If you wanted to, you could do them both together. If you line them up on your cutting mat so that they're level. <laughs> Easier said than done. And then you can go all the way along in one go and make sure that your lines actually meet up. like that and just carry on all the way down and then you know your little box was going to fit into the top of the bigger one and then the next thing to do is to cover the runners so I'm going to take a piece of tape that's slightly longer and I'm just going to stick it half on half off Trim off the ends before I fold. Get rid of the black bits. And then just fold the tape around the top and then do the same again on the other side. Just butting up the joint. Trim the tape off at both ends and fold round. And then you've got perfectly covered runners. Then we'll do the other one. and then wrap it and press your tape down, get rid of any bubbles and then they get stuck in place before we start. So we need some double sided tape for that. I'll put the link to all of the products for this and that box, the tape and everything I've used in the video below in the description. So if you um, are new and you want to try one of our kits, then do follow the links. Or if you've used them before and you'd like more, follow the links. <laughs> and take the tape off. And then this is just going to be centered and sit on that line. So it needs to be centred because the sides sit on here at the ends. So don't stick it up to one end. Now, 
if you're going to stick paper on here, uh, let's just get this one stuck on. So if you're going to stick paper top and bottom, then you're going to need a black edge top and bottom. So before we assemble this, I'm just going to come in and put my black edge on. For those of you that have followed me, um, or follow me, you'll know I work in a very black world. But black does make all of the paper collections really pop. Um, people ask if this tape comes in different colours. No, it's the black, the dark, that gives it the light resistant um, element. You can use other tapes in other colours, they are available. I don't think they're high tack and they're certainly not acid free, but there's no reason why you couldn't use them. They just not might not last as long. On the construction. Let's just trim the top. trim my top. Now where is my little pen? I think it's this one. Where the ends sit, I am just going to touch that up with a black pen. Only because um, if the sides don't sit perfectly over this end, you might see a little bit of black. You could put a piece of tape on there, but just for quickness, I'm just going to touch it up with a black, with a black pen. So that's one side done. Let's just do this one. You want to really butt it right up. So we can put those pieces to one side for a minute and bring in our base and our sides. Now the sides just need to be edged on these short, short sides. So make sure that you're matching them up and it's the vertical sides that need to be edged. Half on, half off, just like we've done before. I think this is magic. It just all comes together. So I've just ripped those ends, fold them round, and then I always snip from the fold. Just tidy them up. And the other one. Ooh. Being able to rip the tape is fabulous. It just makes it such a, such a lot quicker. And the more you work with it, the more confident you'll get. If you've seen our Facebook Live classes, um, they're all projects assembled with our construction tape. So there's no limit really to what you can do with it. So now those are edged, we're ready to start the assembly. So all the way around, half on, half off, on the base, and then just rip or cut out the corners. If you rip carefully, it will rip in a straight line. 
if you're a bit more aggressive, then it will rip that way. Okay, turn over, cut across just an eighth of an inch away from the corner and get those corners off. And then pop the board down sticky side up, bring in the short sides, stand them up, line up top and bottom edges with the outer edges of the base, tilt them in slightly before letting them flop over and cover the gap. That will get covered in a minute and then do the same on the other edge. Put it in slightly and let it fall out. Put it until you've got a level gap. Sometimes it doesn't want to open up. Lift it up and then both sides of the tape stick together. And then bring in your decorated sides. And with the T at the top, position it and stick it in place, lining up one corner, pop it down on your tape and then before you let it fall outwards just tilt it inwards and then let it fall out and cover the... Now what we didn't do and we should do and we'll do it now is just cover these side edges and you can do that in one piece or two. Let's do it this way. So I did touch them up with a pen, but on reflection, maybe we should have done the side edges first. It's a while since I've put the box together. So what I'm going to do is just snip down where those runners meet the end of the side. And then press that down and trim it off. If we trim it along that side edge you won't see it. And now we're completely black at the ends on the inside and the outside. But it's easy to remedy it if you miss a step. From this side, trim it. Get rid of the black bits, fold it up and over, and then where it's sitting over that runner. Just snip down to the board and then I'm just going to snip it first and then press it in with my finger. That's one done. Let's do the other one. So half on, half off. Trim it before you fold it. Fold it up. Snip down. Stick the long sides down. And then just push that in with your nail. And trim off any excess. It's much easier to trim from the outside inwards. And then the last one, let's get rid of the black bits. They are really pesky. And then we can put the sides in.
see how I've tapered out here. I'm happy with that because I know that my paper will sit over that edge. Snip. Snip. Just snip off that tail. I'm just reducing it half, halfway and pressing it down onto the end. Perfect. So, now let's carry on. So with the T at the top, we can add our sides. So line up your corners. And then tilt inwards and then let it fall outwards. Cover the gap. And go right to the very edge. And lift up. So it should want to lift up, you shouldn't have to be pushing it. And then I like to turn around and do this side. So again, I'm just lining up that bottom corner. And then tilt in and let it fall outwards. Press it down flat and cover the gap. And cut off. So all of our inside is edged and all of our outside is edged. So now we just want to join the sides together. So let's bring our box up and tilt it so that you've got long side over short. And just to make sure that everything stays in place, I'm just going to use some holding strips. Just a couple on each side lining up the top edge so at this point you've got a bit of wiggle room to line everything up and do the opposite one make sure that your top edges are nice and straight So put these little tapes part way down, not at the top and bottom, but midway. And then when your side is nice and straight, you can cut your strip to go over the edge. So a piece the length of that edge, put it on the top and press it around the corner. Just keep the top and bottom edges straight. We're going to trim the top, oh, cover the top, cover the bottom. I'm just making sure that my base, I can see here there's a bit of an angle going on. So I know that my side isn't sitting right next to the base. So you can just manipulate the box or put it down and just go around like we did for the smaller box and the lid and make sure that all of your side pieces are sitting next to and not on top of the base. And then you can carry on. around and do the other two sides. So line them up first, pop your holding strips on. I do that because it's quite a long edge and then tape the side.
always come down from the top, the longer side, onto the shorter one, rather than going short side to long, because the short side is the one that's going to move. The long side sits over the short side, so it's solid. Last one, line it up. And then do your long edge. And fold it round. So at this stage, just check that your little box will fit in the larger one and slide along. If it doesn't, then you need to make some adjustments um, to make it fit. But we're okay, as does. So now we can move on to the edging of the top and the bottom. So now we're ready to add the lid to our box. And the first thing we want to do is just take two strips of tape and this is going to be my back. I'm just going to put them vertically over the very edges of the outer edges of the back of the box. Like that. And then I'm going to taper around three sides. So again, before I stick this strip down, I'm just going to snip back those corners, making sure that the tape's right over the edge. Oops. <clears throat> and then you can stick the outside edge down and then just unroll like we've done. And go all the way around <clears throat> to the other end. And then I'm going to cut it and snip off again that bottom corner and the top corner. Snip down at the angled corners, down to the chipboard, and then starting on one of the short sides, I'm just going to move that out of the way, press over the top of the box and then down onto the inside and just finish off those corners really neatly and then the same along the front and then the last short side press down all the way around to make sure that you've got nice flat edges and then we're ready to add the lid. So if I bring the lid in and lift the box up like this, the lid is slightly longer than the box. That allows for paper on the inside of the lid, paper on the outside of the box, added with glue or tape, um, and the box, will, the box lid will still open. So the next thing to do is to secure those two pieces together. So you want to have the gap as even as you can get it either side and then just pop two holding strips of tape on there like that and now we're going to join but we're only going to join these two together from the width of the bottom of the box and we're going to start with a little point you can do this in two sections or you can do it in one and I'm going to start with a point and put that point right at the very edge of the bottom of the box. Go all the way along, trim off at the end of the bottom of the box and then it doesn't matter so much on the top but on the bottom piece just snip that corner back. Press it down and then stand your box up and bring that top piece of tape over. 
And this is what creates what I call a hidden hinge. So you've got it hinged on the outside and now we want to hinge it on the inside. So you just put your lid over like that. Start with a point again and tape the joint. So I've got my point and I'm going to place it right at the end of the bottom of the base. And then take the tape all the way along that top joint. Trim it at the other end. Let's get rid of these black bits. You can see my scissors are getting quite sticky, so I'll show you how I clean them in a minute and snip off. Press down onto either side of your board and that creates your fabulous hidden hinge on your box and it will shut perfectly. And now it's all ready to be decorated. Let's bring the little box in. slides perfectly. Um, now a little tip with the little box, if you find it doesn't really want to slide very well, just on these outer corners take a tea light and just put a little bit of wax on the edges that slide on the runners and then if you pop it in, press and slide backwards and forwards, that adds wax to the runners and your little box will slide really nicely. If you find it sticking at the sides, then you could do the top edge as well. Press your box together. Oh, that's hard. And just get it to slide. Do that before you put your paper on. And um, you could do it afterwards. The, the wax doesn't show. Um, but you want it to be able to move freely so that you can get down into the bottom of the box without lifting that out. Now, you might want to add a ribbon onto your lid, so let me show you how to do that. But before we add the ribbon, I'm just going to show you how I clean my scissors. So this isn't um, marmalade or honey or lemon curd. <laughs> This is a bottle of, or a jar, of um, nail varnish remover, acetone, and a cotton bud. And if you just, you can see instantly, it just lifts the tacky resin from the tape off the scissors. It's really quick. And that way, if you use your cotton bud, it stops you getting acetone on your fingers and your nails if you've got polish on. And then if you just run it up and down the blades, it removes all the sticky. And then your scissors will cut ribbon and not stick to it. So, adding a ribbon. You want to have your box down on the side like that. I'm just going to add ribbon to one side rather than two. I find it's easier. You're not having to match up measurements. So you want some double sided tape and it's going to come across at an angle. You want your box lid to tilt back slightly, not be upright, but have a tilt. So if you lie it down on your mat, with the box lid slightly backwards, not too far, but you don't want it straight. You want it at a nice little angle. And take a couple of strips of double-sided tape and pop them on the side of the base, a quarter of an inch down from the top edge so that the tape gets covered in paper when you decorate your box and you want to position your ribbon at an angle. So I've got my ribbon stuck on the double-sided tape here and then put another couple of strips over the top. 
and that just sandwiches the ribbon between the two layers of sticky. I leave the backing on that one until I put paper in. And then do the same on the inside of the lid, side of the lid. So you want your ribbon to come out and just go straight across onto the lid. I tilt that, you'll be able to see at an angle. Whoops. So come in from the edge again with your tape. Now we're going to stick the ribbon as it comes across, want it in a nice straight line to sit on that tape. And then before you put double-sided tape on the top of that ribbon, just check when you stand your box up that the angle is right and your lid is tilting not too upright and not too far back. And when you're happy with that angle, then you can cover the ribbon in the lid with double-sided tape. I'm just going to trim the end off. and then just cover the end with double sided tape keeping it away a quarter of an eighth of an inch from both edges so that you know that it will get decorated with paper and then leave those tapes on until you're ready to decorate and that is uh, this and that box assembled with our signature black construction tape and when it's all decorated this is what it looks like it's a really lovely box you might find that your ribbon doesn't want to fold inwards to start with but after a while it will just automatically find its shape and just go in as the lid shuts and then you can add your fancy feet and decorative papers this box was decorated in um, a vintage graphic 45 collection called artisan style so um, Alfonso Mucho was the artist for a lot of the imagery and I got quite creative with the elements from the paper and put alphabets strips on those sliders that we've added to the box. Single pieces top and bottom here and then cut all your papers an eighth of an inch, narrower and shorter than the width and the depth of your box. This one, I didn't stick anything on the back of that little box, but it's a really fun box. But that's it, that's how to decorate um, or put together a 3D project with a hidden hinge using our signature black construction tape. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, do give me the thumbs up if you did. I hope I've inspired you to be creative and subscribe to my channel and then you'll be kept up to date with new projects and products as they come out. Thanks for watching.